Are you ready to learn life-changing strategies on how to bullyproof yourself, your kids, and others? Are you ready to be empowered with hope, faith, and confidence to believe in yourself, to overcome your fears and battle through your challenges, to stand up to any bully you face, both real and in your mind? Well, you've come to the right place. Four questions, four, that every parent needs to know the answer to. What are they? Well, it has to do with bullyproof. You probably figure that one out, right? All right, well, I'll get to you in a minute. But listen in. Master Grogan here. I hope you're having a fantastic day. It's been a while since I've done a Facebook Live, but I'm going to get more of these coming your way simply because uh, I've got so much to share. I'm going to get that message out to empower so many parents, uh, coaches, teachers, and adults to pass that message on to their kids. Yeah, because collectively we're going to work together and do this. We're going to bullyproof this next generation and ourselves. So what are those four questions? The first question is, does your kid know how to stand up to bullying? Do they? Do they know how to stand up to bullying? Now, the answer I get uh, a lot of times when I ask that, the parents will say, yep, or the mostly dads. And I told them, anybody bullies you, punch them right in the mouth. That's how you stop bullying. Well, that, that is a way to stop the bullying. Now, my goal is it never gets to that point that they have to actually physically defend themselves. If we stop it soon enough by using the ABCs to become bullyproof, it'll never get that physical level. And unfortunately, if your kid hauls off and wham, jacks somebody in the face, I'm not saying the other kid didn't deserve it, but now your kid's going to probably be in trouble. They break their nose or <laughs> uh, knock a tooth out or break their jaw. Your kid's going to be in some trouble. So the goal is to keep them from getting to that part that they actually have to physically defend themselves. So how do they do that? Let's do the ABCs. You've heard me talk about the ABCs before. The A is awareness and avoidance. Parents, this is a good thing for you too, to be aware of what your kids are doing, who they're surrounding themselves with, who's on their social media channels. Now, this is something I tell parents all the time, and coaches and teachers listening in too, that, well, parents now, if you paid for that phone, you paid for that device, that is yours. That means you have the right to look through that thing and see who they are associating with. Now, a lot of parents will say, well, I want to give them their privacy and, uh, you know what, it's their phone and I want them to be able to deal with it and handle it on their own. I get all that. I respect their privacy too. But the point is, these cell phones, social media, is far too powerful for us as adults. Think about them. You know, they, 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 we grew up without them. They have not had any part of life that they haven't had social media or the cell phones. I like to call the cell phones the digital pacifier. They're powerful and they can operate them better than we can, Right. My point is, the A in awareness is teaching your kids to be aware of negative situations, to be aware of the bullies, to be aware of ways they may be bullying themselves or someone else. But parents, you need to be aware as well. Be aware of who's on there. And I'm telling you, if you're paying for that phone, that is your phone, that is your device. And if they got nothing to hide, then they have no reason to not show you what's on there. And it's for their own protection. And if they don't want to listen, tell them, contact me. I'll talk to them. You listen to your parents or I'm going to take your phone away. All right, so one. Can they stand up? Do they know how to stand up to bullying? The A is awareness and avoidance. If you avoid the bully, and I'm not saying ever run from your trouble, but don't put yourself in a dangerous situation. The B is a believe in yourself with your bullyproof armor. You put that armor on through positive self-talk, through surrounding yourself with the right group of influences and people, not allowing negativity to creep into your mental garden and plant seeds of self-doubt and fear. That's part of the bullyproof armor. And the C is communicate clearly and confidently. You avoid, you take those steps most of the time, it's going to shut the bullying down before it ever has a chance to pick up any momentum, before it has a chance for two or three others to join in to the bullying. That's avoiding punching them in the mouth, like I said, and then your kid getting in trouble for it. Now, we do have the D. The D is defend yourself with physical force if physically attacked, but it's not a punch in the mouth. It's a palm strike <clears throat> to the solar plexus. I promise you. One, it's an effective technique. The hands are open. You never made a fist. You knock the wind out of that person. Boy, there is nothing more humiliating. And it's the same technique I teach police officers. If a person doesn't have air in their lungs, they can't breathe, they can't move, they can't continue to attack. There's no broken jaws, there's no broken nose, there's no teeth missing. It's just simply the wind knocked out and they'll recover from it. But that's not a go-to up front. Can't just haul off and whack somebody in the gut. And go through the steps, the A, B, C, and D. So back to my initial question. First of four, does your kid know how to stand up to bullying? Well, that have given you some tips on how to do it besides just punching them in the mouth, right? Number two, is your kid bullyproof? Well, being bullyproof means the way they carry themselves, their attitude, their effort, the amount of self-respect they have for themselves, obviously. 
I mean, and and uh, people ask all the time why I think there's so much disrespect in the world. The reason that I think there's so much disrespect is because there's so little self-respect. When you don't respect yourself or when a child or adult doesn't respect themselves, then there's no way in the world they're ever going to respect anything or anyone else. It just isn't going to happen. Because if you can't show respect to you, if you don't believe in you to respect you, then why in the world would you ever think about respecting anyone or any, uh, anything else? I know, it's, 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 it, it's basic, right? It's so common, it's common sense. But obviously we know common sense isn't all that common anymore. But that's, uh, that's the, uh, are, are they bullyproof? Are they doing things, positive self-talk? Are they talking negatively about themselves? Are they going around saying, oh, I'm so stupid, I'm so dumb, I'm worthless, I don't have any friends. That's disrespecting themselves. That's not being bullyproof. How can we be bullyproof? ABCs, awareness of what you're doing, who you're surrounding yourself with. B, believe in themselves, positive self-talk, and the C, communicate clearly. Third question, number three, are they a bullyproof hero for someone else? Are they? Are they sticking up for others? Are they helping others who are in need? Are they joining in? Well, if they are, don't know how to stand up to a bully to begin with, and if they're not bullyproof, chances are they're probably not a bullyproof hero for someone else. Kind of goes in progression there, right? Yeah, a bullyproof hero not only believes enough of themselves to stand up for themselves, to communicate clearly with their posture, there are tiger's eyes, there's lion's voice, someone's being rude, mean, and disrespectful, stand up for themselves saying, stop it, don't talk to me like that, and mean it. If the same thing, if you're a bullyproof hero, you're doing that for somebody else who cannot or is unable to stand up for themselves. Instead of joining in, no, you're putting a stop to it. And how bullying works, which I'm going to talk about in the fourth question here, is it usually starts off with one person, and nothing's done to stop it. Then another person, then two or three people join in. And before you know it, you got this onslaught all attacking this one person. And no one wants to be on that side of it. So they kind of join in unknowingly. Which brings right to the fourth question. Is your kid a bully? What? Is your kid a bully? Say, oh no, he's got all kinds of friends or she's got all kinds of friends. She would never do that because I've talked to her. I, would, I told her, you know how bad it feels. You've been bullied. Don't ever do that to someone else. Well, the unfortunate truth is a lot of times kids are bullying without even knowing it. And you might say, what do you mean they're bullying without even knowing it? Come on, man. It happens. How it happens is the example I just gave. One kid's bullying another, calling them names, picking on them, excluding from groups, or worse, on social media, they're sending different things, um, they're, they're hazing them, they're online, and there's a difference between having fun and if you're on a sports team with someone, but it gets to the point where it's no longer just one person and it's no longer just kind of laugh where both people are laughing, but now one person feels down here and the other person's up here. Well, before you know it, that one turns into two, that two turns into three, and then four, and then five, and now you've got five people against this one person, and your kid may unknowingly be part of that group. Why? Well, maybe they didn't believe enough of themselves to stop it, or they were fearful if I say anything, this person won't be my friend anymore. If I say anything, then maybe they're going to turn and bully me. Same fears we had when we were younger. Probably the same fears we have right now as adults. You know, we see it going on online, but rarely do we say anything about it. Or even in the workplace, or maybe if our kid's on a sports team, somebody will start something and we just say, well, it's none of my business. Before you know it, two or three people are involved. Now, I'm not saying, once again, the answer is not to punch somebody in the face. <laughs> as much as it seems like that would end it. That would end it. Now, I'm a big believer and there should be a consequence for action. But just because someone's saying mean things doesn't necessarily uh, um, uh, constitute a punch in the chops. Like I mentioned, there's ways to do it and to keep it from getting physical. If it gets physical, I already told you, that palm strike to the solar plexus, that's how you do it, but only if you are physically attacked. Because then if you're physically attacked, it is no longer... Bullying it is now assault and battery. And by law, you have the right to physically protect yourself with enough force to stop the attack, but not above that. So that's why I talk about the palm strike. It's an open hand technique. And you show that you've done everything to defuse the situation. Your hands are open. You're saying, hey, calm down, calm down. So back to the fourth question. Is your kid a bully? Here's the deal. Bullying is a learned behavior. Most of the time it's learned... From, from kids watching either their parents or older brother or older sister, and all they know is, wow, um, they're doing it. They're getting attention. I like that attention. Or I'm feeling degraded, and this person's doing it to me, my older brother, older sister, or mom or dad, and I respect them. This must be the way to act. That seems crazy, but it's the reality of things. So what do they do? They try and get that feeling they think their parents or big brother or big sister have 
of bullying somebody, which they think is a good feeling because it makes them feel powerful and tough and uh, I am the king or queen. <laughs> but it doesn't. We know that. But here's the deal. If it's not stopped early, it will continue to move on and on and on. Sort of like getting a car started. Have you ever had to push a car? Oh my gosh. It's hard as heck to get it going at first. Once you get going there and picks up momentum, and especially you got now two, three, four, five people helping you push the car, it gets easier and easier. Well, the same thing. Well, pushing a car to help somebody is one thing, but continuing to build on the momentum of bullying someone else, especially online, because very rarely is it ever shut down online. Why? People are hiding behind their keyboards and screens. And obviously there's a lot of bots out there too, but uh, you know, one person says something negative, another person, and before you know it, a whirlwind starts, and now you got one person trying to defend themselves against 5, 10, 20 different you know, keyboard warriors, we like to call them, keyboard war uh, bullies. But if one person says, hey, knock that stuff off, enough. Or stand up for that person that's being bullied and remove them from that situation. That's part of being a bullyproof hero, is removing them. But you can't be a hero and a bully at the same time. But you can become bullyproof and realize and, and know the difference between the two. And I always like to say this to kids, even adults. And, and it, it, I was a PE teacher for 11 years. And, of course, I taught martial arts for 35 years. And now I'm coaching my son's hockey team or assistant coach. I'm so happy to be back on the ice again. But uh, it was always a, a lot of times teachers would say, hey, if it's, uh, it it's, uh, makes you feel bad or doesn't make you feel good, don't do that to somebody else. And that's a nice way of putting it. I'm a little more, I don't know, abrupt, I guess. I just simply say, hey, man, would you like it if I talk to you that way? No, then don't talk to somebody else that way because you know how bad it makes you feel. Now, that's just me. That's just my nature. But instead of doing the old, ah, la, 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 it's kind of get to the point, especially when you're talking to teenagers. They're not going to listen to that kind of Pamby Bambi stuff. Of, don't do it to someone else because it's not very nice. They're not going to listen to that. I'm not going to listen to that at all. Be direct, be forward, get to the point across. You wouldn't like it if I talked to you that way. Don't you talk to someone else that way. Knock it off. Come on, man. You're better than that. Come on. You're my buddy. You're my hero. Heroes don't do that. Come on. It's effective. It works. Because I'm talking to them in a way and a language they understand. Yeah, I'm not talking down. I'm not talking up. I'm not uh, uh, patronizing them in any way, shape, or form. I'm just talking to them. And that's the C. Communicate clearly and confidently and know who your audience is. So, a recap. What are the four? Does your kid know how to stand up to bullies? Do you know how to stand up to a bully at work? Or maybe on your sports team? Are you bullyproof? Are your kids bullyproof? Are you or your kids bullyproof heroes for someone else? You see what I'm doing here? I'm planting seeds because it's really hard to try and bullyproof someone else if you're not bullyproof yourself. Yeah. And then the fourth one, are your kids a bully? Are you a bully? Unknowingly? Now, I want you to think. Would you like to be on that side of it? Have everybody against you? Absolutely not. So if you see that happening to someone else, man, do something. Be a hero. Set that example for your kids. Plant that seed in your kid's mind. Tell them, hey, you wouldn't like if people doing that to you. Be the bullyproof hero. And I'm telling you, the more we can strengthen that bullyproof armor, that's the B, believe in yourself by strengthening that bullyproof armor, we're going to be able to stand up to any bully we face, both real and in our mind. And the bully in here is the meanest, nastiest bully we'll ever face in our entire life. Why? The bully in here thrives on all the fear, all the limiting beliefs, all the negativity, anything negative someone has ever said about us, that bully in our mind is going to pull that back up and re-spin it. And that's when you've got to shut that down. I just had yesterday, I was working on, I've got, uh, well, by the way, well, if you haven't picked up a copy of Becoming Bullyproof, please do so. And please, if you already read it, Leave us that five-star review. We've got 55 reviews now. I'd like to get that up to over 100. Because why? Because it's going to get this book in the hands of more people who need it to help empower them to become bullyproof, make society a happier, healthier, and safer place to live. And then second, this is coming out Tuesday, folks. I believe in me. Now, this is the author's copy. That's why they got that ring around there. But it's coming out Tuesday. It's a positive affirmations book of the ABCs. It's for little kids to learn the ABCs, but also a positive affirmation. But I'll tell you what, I've had several adults <laughs> already proof it, and they're like, oh my gosh, I love this book. This helps me. And uh, so that's the whole idea, to plant the positive seeds in that mental garden. But uh, anyway, yesterday I was uh, working on this, and I've got the Audible version coming out for Becoming Bullyproof soon. I'm putting together a workshop for a coaching program for uh, the hockey organization that Emmett's a part of. And I hit a wall, man. I just, bang, hit that wall. And I was like, I can't get anything done. I'm spinning in circles. Now, part of my creative genius is uh, I'm very creative. Just ideas all over the place. 
The hardest thing for me is putting those ideas together into something that's actually tangible that people can use or learn from. That's just a hard thing for me. Talking? Well, according to my second grade teacher, Richie talks too much, and she's right. That's what I do for a living. But, uh, uh, but anyway, I hit that wall yesterday, and it took me being aware that's what I was doing. I was hitting that wall, and of course, you know, being a fighter, you're out there, you're going, I'm going to battle through this thing. I'm going to overcome. I'm going to succeed. I'm going to keep going. But if you keep banging your head against the wall, that's bullying yourself. And that's exactly what I was doing. So I, all right, I'm not getting anything done. I need to get up, go get a drink of water, walk outside, say, hey, I'm in Florida. This is beautiful here. And that's really all it took to reset that, 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 that engine, reset that mindset, the motor. Like if the computer gets bogged down, you restart it, right? Well, the same thing here. I had to be aware of that. Then I had to reprogram that, believe in myself. Talk positive instead of, oh, man, I can't get this. I'm such an idiot. Oh, my gosh. No, knock that stuff off. That's bullying myself. And I know that all, a lot of us out there have done that before. And then I had to communicate clearly and confidently to myself as, hey, we're going to refresh and we're going to get back at this thing. I did. Unbelievable how well that works. So why am I sharing all this with you? Because I want you to become bullyproof. I want you to become your very, very best so you can pass that on to your kids to help them because they learn through us. They see what we're doing. And if we're constantly in a bad mood, bad state, because we're not sleeping well, we're bad talking ourselves, we're essentially bullying ourselves. And they're going to think that's the way they need to do it for themselves. Right? And if we're bad talking others and bullying others, that's what they're going to do. So back to the four questions. We just answered them. But are your kids, do your kids know how to stand up to bullying? Are they bullyproof? Are they a bullyproof hero or someone else? Or are they a bully? And a lot of that comes back to us. Right? Folks, I love you. I'm doing everything I can. I want to empower at least 10 million people to, to become bullyproof by believing themselves with hope, faith, and confidence to overcome their fears, battle through their challenges, to stand up to any and every bully they face, both real and in their mind. Just think about how much better we can make society, how much better we can make it for our kids if we're able to do that. But it all starts off with that confidence, that belief, that hope, that faith in themselves. Teenagers, it's a hard year. Oh my gosh, think back when you are a teenager and we didn't have social media. The pressures of that. The social media is too powerful for us. It's far too powerful for them. So imagine that their hormones are out of whack, right? They're, they, they don't know what's going on. I'm reading a book right now. It's called uh, The Teenage Brain. And the author gives an example of her teenage daughter smiling and happy when her hand hits her bedroom door. By the time she walks into her bedroom, she's in a full-fledged panic attack, anxiety, and crying and having a temper tantrum. Why? Because her hormones are out of whack. We all went through it. Maybe not to that extreme, but um, if you think back when you're a teenager, and once again, we didn't have near the stimulus that the kids have right now. So in a sense, a lot of times, we're bullying ourselves. And I mentioned this on another video. The A and the ABCs have become bullyproof also for parents is awareness. Be aware of your kids. Be aware of what's going on in their lives. And if you're paying for this device, this phone, if you're paying for it, it is your phone. It is your device. You have every right to see who they're connecting with, who they're communicating with to protect them. And if they got nothing to hide, then, then they have nothing to keep from you, right? There's no reason why you shouldn't look at it. And our parents say, oh, that's their privacy, man. I don't want to do that. Now, it's your phone, and you could be potentially protecting them and saving them from predators or groomers or any other sicko out there that's trying to hurt them or try and bully them, right? All right. Good stuff, folks. Well, hey, just a reminder, this is coming out Tuesday. So if you have not, uh, well, make sure on Tuesday it's on Amazon. And it's also on our website, grogansbullyproof.com. And if you've already picked up a copy of Becoming Bullyproof, please leave that five-star review. And if you haven't, grab one, all right? And uh, all kinds of other good stuff going. Folks, I love you. God loves you. Please, share that love with the world. And until we talk again, you get out there and do your best, and I promise, you'll be your very best. Your kids will be their very best. You'll become bullyproof. Yeah! They'll become bullyproof, and you'll live your best kick in life. God bless you. God bless your loved ones. Thank you so very much for your time. I sincerely appreciate it. If you found value in this, share it with someone else. God bless. Bye-bye. Thank you so very much for listening in today. I am truly grateful for your time. My goal is to empower 10 million people with hope, faith, and confidence to believe in themselves to become bullyproof. But I can't do it alone. So if you found value in this message, please share it with someone else who could benefit from it and by subscribing and leaving a five-star review. Remember to stay empowered throughout the week by visiting our social media channels, Rogan's Bullyproof, and our website, Rogan'sBullyproof.com. And if you haven't already done so, be sure to pick up copies of all our Bullyproof books for yourself and someone you care about. Thank you again, and make it a blessed day.